Let's just have a moment, shall we? We've taken communion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can find ourselves rushing, can't we? And uh, God's not a God who rushes. He doesn't rush, doesn't God? He does things in His time. Amen. In His time. We like Him to do it and do it now, but God does it in His time. So it might be that you're just waiting for something in your life right now. Why don't you just bring that before God in your heart? Father, you search the hearts of man. You, you don't look on the outward appearance. You look on the inward appearance of God and you know, Father, there's those of us in this room here right now, we're just, we're just waiting, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you are with us in the waiting. Yes, I Lord God, that when we wait, oh God, we don't wait alone. And sometimes, Father, we can think we do wait alone, but Lord, the truth of the matter is, we don't wait alone because you say in your word that you will never leave us or forsake us. Father, so I want to thank you for that wonderful promise today, that Lord, you would underline that upon any one of us in this room, Father, that you are with us, that you will not forsake us, O oh God, and that as we uh, become hungry and thirsty, Lord, as we search for you, as we desire to go deeper, Father, as we desire to know more, Lord God, that you'd protect us from the deception of the evil one. Lord, in these times that we live, there's deception at every turn of a corner, Father God. So we pray, Lord, that you help us, to keep us strong, keep us safe. Uh, Father God, straighten our path, O oh God. Uh, protect us, Lord, and, and may we, Father God, look to you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, would you bless this word today? Would you speak to us through it? And would you inspire us as we look to worship in you, as we look to hear in your voice, Father? Mm. We do. We need you. Holy Spirit, we need you. Without you, there's no point. <laughs> amen. No point. Hallelujah. Praise God. Interested about waiting. When we go to India, quite quite often, it's quite quite interesting that that there is this sense of you pray, and and Stuart would be witness to this, and Donna would be witness to this. who have been to India with us. That that you might start a meeting, and and then you might be praying for people after, and you might pray for quite a few people, and nothing seems to happen, and then suddenly, it's like suddenly the Lord steps in the room, and everything happens. Uh, and so God's teaching me a little bit about learning to wait. Um, I'm just a slow learner. <laughs> but a little bit about learning to wait. And it's good to wait. So even when you come for prayer, you know, don't think God's going to do it bang straight away. It's just learn to wait. Say, Lord, in your time, uh, teach me to wait. Teach me to be faithful. Teach me to be true in the waiting and not to be irritated or stressed out or anxiety yeah amen, amen. well we, we, we had a look at joshua last uh, last week and um i just said that god wanted us to have another look at, at joshua what where we got to is that joshua and the israelites had just crossed the river jordan into the promised land and uh, that in itself was a miracle yeah. The river Jordan was in full flood. Mm -hmm. The Bible is very clear to say it's in full flood, not just flood, but full flood. And, and why does God want the river Jordan to be in full flood? Just so that he can stop it. Yeah. <laughs> just so that he can stop it. So that he shows us just who he is, and he showed the Israelites just who he is uh, as, as they went into the promised land. And they needed to know that. We need to know in our lives just who God is. And we need to know that this God can stop anything that's in full flood. The army yes, of Satan could be coming after you yes. and coming against you, but God can stop it amen. in the name of Jesus. You might be struggling with things in life and, and not knowing which way to turn, but God can stop it. And it's having faith. They have to have faith to step in <coughs> to the river. And as they stepped on the edge, as they touched the water, the water stopped. So you can see it's a two-way thing. It's not like God stopped it and okay, it's safe to go now. No, the water was still coming past and then they stepped and then it stopped. Yeah. So, so there's a, an element of that in our lives sometimes. Yes. When we give our lives to Jesus and, yeah. and we're journeying with Jesus and we find, we, we do face trials of many kinds, don't we? Yeah. And we do have troubles pretty much every day, don't we? Uh, and, and learning to know that God is with us and then asking God, God, what are you trying to teach me through this? 
And I believe God's always trying to teach us yes. something. Yes. And God wanted the Israelites just to know who God is. Yes. Yeah. Because they've got to go. The next, the next challenge is Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> not a little, not a little town, not a little city, but probably the most fortified city yeah. that there was. God always starts with the big ones, the giant, Goliath. Yeah. They were huge. Send David a little lad to go and sort him out. Hallelujah. He picked a nine foot something fella. Huge. Yeah. Why didn't he just pick, you know, a nine foot white fella instead? <laughs> he, he probably was both ways. But, but what is God showing us through this and what can we learn is that God is bigger and better and there's nothing that our God yeah. cannot do. Yeah. And he really needs us. He really wants us to get that yeah. into our faith level so that we'll start to pray the bigger prayers. The bolder prayers, the stronger prayers. Praise God for that wonderful answer to prayer for, uh, for Adam, Greg, a wonderful. And, and, and others, you know, we've been praying for other people. Isaiah, my grandson, we've been praying for him. He was full of sores and he was full of... There's just the odd one left now. It's nearly completely cleared out. Those who have been praying, and thank you, I'll send an update. So you get an update of Sarah. I'll forward it to him today sometime. <clears throat> But our God, he does, he answers prayers. He's a prayer answering God. So it says, uh, so we're in, we're in Joshua chapter 5, and we're talking about the fall of Jericho. So the Israelites, they're, they're ready, they've, they've crossed the Jordan, and now they're looking to Jericho. Now, how are we going to do this? How are we going to handle this? Mm. This is not an easy task. And verse 13 says, now when Joshua was near Jer Jericho, so Joshua's coming close to Jericho, and he could probably see the walls, and he could probably think, oh yeah. wow, God, you know, <laughs> where are you? Yeah. I'm with you, don't worry. Remember this, remember this, do not be afraid, don't be discouraged, be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. Don't forget that, Joshua, I spoke that to you, I'm with you, we've got this. My mate Scott says, Paul mentioned it this morning, Scott always says, God's got this. God's got this, yeah. God's, got this. God's got Adam. God's got this. God's got your situation. God's got it. And so he said he looked up and, and, and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. So he saw a man. Joshua went up to the guy and said, Are you for us? Or are you for our enemies? Right. Now imagine that. Just think about that, okay? Joshua thinking, who's this guy? Who is he? There's a man with a drawn sword. Well, what if he were for their enemies? <laughs> What's Joshua going to do then? Yeah. Imagine that, yeah? Joshua walking up to this guy. I hate for us or for our enemies. Well, if he's for his enemies, Joshua's in trouble. Yeah. It's true, isn't it? And, and Joshua, but such was the confidence and the boldness of Joshua because he knew God was with him. Yeah. And God wants us yeah. to embrace yeah. the confidence and the yeah. boldness and the hope that we can get through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, who is in us. Yes. Amen. Amen. Neither, he replied. That's right. Neither. But as commander of the army of the Lord, Ooh. I have now come. Yes. Yeah. So no, I'm not for you, Joshua. And I'm not for the enemies. I'm not for Jericho. I'm for God. Yes. I'm for the Lord. Who are you for? Amen. <laughs> what a great question. Who are you for? Are you for the Lord? I, I want to say I'm for the Lord. Yes. I sometimes don't live that way, but I'd like to think that I'm for the Lord. I don't think you're a little bit like that. Yeah. But Lord, help me in the bits when I don't just look like I'm for you, but I, I really want to be for you, God. Yeah, you know, I just really want to be so hungry and thirsty for God. I, I do. I really do. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence because he recognised that this was the commander of the army of the Lord. Yes, amen. What message does my Lord have for his servant? Mm. What message? What, 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 what can he say to me? The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals. <laughs> for the place where you are standing is holy. Holy ground. Holy ground. Yeah. And Joshua did so. Remember Moses? Yeah, yeah. Take off your sandals. This is holy ground at the burning bush. We need to have some holy ground moments in our walk with God. Yes. 
and you can have a holy ground moment. You know, Matthew 6, 6, it talks about finding that place, going into your room, closing the door, and you, who you do not see, you don't see your father, but your father sees you as you pray, and he hears you, and he'll bless you. Your father sees you, even though we don't see him. And in that moment, wherever that place might be, why don't you take a leaf out of Joshua's book and Moses' book and recognise that the place where you are when you're in prayer, in communion with God and the Holy Spirit anoints you, you're on holy ground. Yeah. You're on holy ground. We are on holy ground in this place right now. Yes, amen. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. Text two or three, so we're in two or three. Again, yes. together. Then he said, if any agree. You've got to agree. Yeah. Will anybody agree with me that this is holy ground? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a witness. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is holy ground. This is our God. And, uh, and, and we need to recognize that. So God, we acknowledge that this is holy ground. Would you inspire us, Father God, from the feet upwards, if necessary, the presence of your amazing Holy Spirit. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred. Yes. They were locked. These are not little gates. This is not like your garden gate. These are huge gates. Uh, why, why were they locked? Because of the Israelites. Yeah. Mm. They're locked because of the Israelites. No one went in and no one came, came out. Right. And then the Lord said to, Jericho, uh, said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. Yeah. I wonder what Joshua thought. Mm. Because it's not happened yet. See, I've, I've delivered Jericho into your hand. So he said, march around the city once with the, all, all the armed men. Just march it once. And then he said, do this for six days. So six days. So I've given it to you, jo Joshua. Jericho's your city. The king's yours. You've, you've won it. You've captured it. It's yours. You've defeated it. But we've a week we've to wait a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember God? God's. Well, why not now, God? I mean, I wonder if Joshua thought, oh, that's, I, I, I can it be mine. Well, what, what's going to happen? The gates are barred, the walls are still there. How is it mine? You know, sometimes in our lives we face situations where it seems like, you know, like anxiety and anxiousness or depression or fear and all these things are addiction. It, it seems that the gates are barred and the walls are up. And there's no way we can get through it. There's no way we can break. But God said, I've given it to you. Amen. Amen. I've given it to yes. you. That we need to know the faith. We need to know the faith uh, that God has put in us. Jesus said, yeah, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, yes. you can say to the gates that have had open, yeah. the walls that are fortified fall down. Imagine that. That we can say, to the things that we wrestle with in life, I can see the cracks. Yes, yeah, I can yeah. see the cracks breaking. Amen. I can see the stone starting to crumble. I'm going in, I've got this. Amen. I've got this. I'm going to break through. I wonder if you wrestle with anything in your life. I wonder if there's anything that, that really troubles you. I wonder if that you're feeling like you're under your circumstances. And yet God says, no, you're not under them, you're above them. Amen. Because I'm your God and I'm yeah. with you. And, and, and I've already given it to you in your hands. What, you've got to wait six days. I'll give it to you in your hands, but you've got to do this. So they have to march around. Now it's crazy what's walking around the city once on a Monday. Or maybe on a Sunday. And then a Monday. And then a Tuesday. Then a Wednesday. Then a Thursday. It's Thursday now, can we not have it yet, God? No, it's Thursday. You've only done it five, Joshua. Six, we said. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ready? Come on, guys. Friday, here we go. Imagine what the army... These are fighting men that want to fight. Yes. Got it? A fighting man doesn't want to walk around the city. Yes, God. He doesn't want to walk around. That's crazy. Why would he? Because in him is fight. Yeah. He wants to... He wants to breach the walls. He wants to drag that gate down. He wants to break in because God's given it. But it's got to be God's way or no way. Yeah. And that seems to be our life. It's God's way or no way. Amen. And we need God's way in our lives. Hallelujah. We need God's way. And he said, uh, do it for six days. 
Verse 4 it said, listen, have seven priests carry trumpets of rams, uh, uh, sorry, of rams horns in front of the ark. So they took the ark. And on the seventh day, marched around the city seven times. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Once every day for six days. And on the seventh day, seven times. Now that must have done the rest in. <laughs> that must have just messed with the rest. Do you find life sometimes messes with your head a little bit? Yes. <laughs> Even when we prayed, even when we cried out to God. Yes. I mean, seven. But notice that how he set it up. He said, have the priests carry the trumpets of the ram's horn in front of the ark. So what did they lead with? They led with praise. Yes. Amen. yes they led with praise. Can yes. I suggest something to you? Whenever you're feeling miserable and you're at home yes. and you're wondering what, what's going on, put some praise on. Yes. Amen. Put some praise music on. Even when you don't feel like it. Because you won't. You won't. You'll probably feel like getting your phone out and scrolling through some nonsense videos. Or you'll probably feel like saying, Alexa, play something. Or you'll probably feel like watching some soaps or catch up on TV. And, and none of that. God's way or no way. Oh, that's no way. But God's way is worship. So put some worship music on. Alexa, play some Christian music. <laughs> if you've got Alexa, or if you've got them sort of things, and if you haven't, just play some Christian music. Get some on your phone. Get your phone to play some Christian music. So we lead with worship. Worship, it seems, to be key into the not only into the presence of God, but into the victory of God as well. Hallelujah. And it's very clear here that that's what's going on. So worshiping, and then they've got the ark, and the ark, the ark represents God. Okay, forgive me, Lord, but God in a box. It's not really in a box, it's outside a box, but they felt that that's where God was. Yeah. They felt that that's where God was. He said, on the seventh day, my sound seven times. And then he said, when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets. Yes. A long blast on the trumpets. Yeah. Have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up and everyone straight in. How good is that? Yeah. Praise the Lord. God's amazing. Have, 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 have everyone give a loud shout. There's a scripture, it's in Samuel, I think it was Samuel, and it, and it says that the Lord, it's when Saul, Saul got a little bit ahead of himself and uh, he decided to uh, sacrifice, uh, bring a sacrifice rather than letting the, let the prophet Samuel do it. And he, he went ahead, did, did Saul. He, he, he didn't wait. For the man of God, he went ahead, and because he went ahead, because he didn't wait for God, he lost the anointing right. yeah. on that day. Yeah. Yeah. He lost everything. He lost and, and in that, when Samuel says, "The Lord, uh, it doesn't require sacrifice, but obedience." Yes. To be obedient, that God wants us to learn to be obedient. And these guys that had to march, the main lesson that they want us to learn is obedience. obedience. Yes. Fighting men. Walking around the city once a day for six days, on the seventh day seven times, and then having to shout. What, not fight? No. <laughs> yeah. Shout. Do it my way, God's way or no way. Yeah. So they shouted, and they must have got it. Maybe that's why they had to do that. Maybe. Imagine the conversation that they had after they'd walked around once and they went back to camp. Well, what, all, what were all that about? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Joshua, does Joshua know what he's doing? <laughs> he's taking over Moses, but does he, does he really know? Does he know what he's doing? Could you imagine the conversation along yeah. the fighting men, those that haven't just got there yet? Then the second day, what we're all on about? I don't know, he asked me that yesterday. I don't know. <laughs> does Joshua know what he's on about? No, I don't know. I see him over there in that tent. Could you imagine it? Yeah. Then the third day, don't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> don't say a word. Can you imagine it? Each day, and all the fighting men sat there thinking, <laughs> got to take my armor off again, sit down, put my feet up, wait till tomorrow. <laughs> I wonder what they felt. Because they were real human beings. Yes. Yes. And we have to step into real yes. humanity of the story. Because it's not exactly as we read it, there's a deeper meaning to it yes. that we have to um, tease out. And that's why God wants us to go in. God's got a sense of humour. Yeah. And sometimes we have to use the humour yeah. to get God's sense 
Yeah. <laughs> out of it, amen. But sometimes we need some humor, and God doesn't want us to be miserable. God, He said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. You can imagine. <laughs> Just imagine on day six. <laughs> I wonder if any didn't turn out. What do you mean? You, you can't. I wouldn't stay there if I were you. Come on. You better come with us. Well, we've just done it for five days. I know. Just stick with the plan. Come on. Yeah. Let's go. Let's walk around. We've got to do this. Yeah, but I, I know neither do I. But come on. We've got to trust. Does Joshua know it? Yeah, I'm sure he does. And then on the seventh day, thank goodness it's changed. It's changed, guys. Wow, what we're doing today. Well, we're going to walk, well, we're going to walk around seven times today. <laughs> Imagine. Oh. <laughs> You know them, them emojis on, the, on your phone, they go, you, know, yeah. <laughs> you just think, God, <laughs> they're rolling up the eyes. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, they would have been so funny. I bet it would have been great to see it. But you know what? The thing is about these guys, they laid down the fighting spirit within the flesh. Yes. And they picked up the mantle of God, Amen. the word of God, Amen. in the spirit. Yes. And they were That's obedient the to the king yes. of kings. Amen. And the Lord of Lords. And oh Lord, if we would just learn to be obedient. Yeah. If we would learn to be what does God want first and foremost? He wants our praise. He wants our praise and he wants our praise from our hearts, from our whole being, from everything within us. Just to really Lord make me hungry and thirsty for praise. Teach me how to praise. You know, the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. God teaches how to praise. Yes. Yeah. They were shouting. Yes, yes. Hello, shout. And the walls came down. How good was that? How amazing was that? He said there was a great shout. And then he said everything will collapse. And the army will go straight in. So, so Joshua, son of Nun, he called the priests and said to them, Take up, this is it, God's just told him this, Take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, Advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. And Joshua had spoken to the people and the seven priests carrying the trumpets. Blowing their trumpets in the ark of the Lord, covenant, they followed them. It said they went, uh, they, they went and it said in verse 10, but Joshua had commanded the army, do not give a war cry, do not raise your voices, do not say a word and tell the day that I tell you to shout. That's right, yeah, that's right. So not only had they to walk round, but they to keep quiet. Yeah. Wow. Imagine the abuse he got from the people yeah. on the walls. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he fatted down there. What are you doing? What are you walking around this wall for? Imagine. I'm sure that didn't happen. They'd have been terrified behind the walls. Yeah. Well, just imagine. Imagine what the enemy were doing inside the reds. Yeah. Where's the battle? Imagine what the enemy were doing in here. He's got to disrupt him. He's got to bring deception inside the thing. Does Joshua really know what he's doing? Are you sure? Did yeah. Joshua really hear God? Are you sure? Is this really going to happen? Are you sure? That's what the enemy does to you. Are you sure you're saved? <laughs> are you sure you're really born again? Are you sure you really are God like that? You know that? You know that? Do you ever have that? Yeah. You know, you, you feel so confident that God said do something, and then the question comes in, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as, isn't it true? I find this in, in work, you know, we'll be, doing, we'll be doing things in work, and just say there's a, there's a leather sweep that we're making, and uh, we, we've got so many variations of our sweeps and say like nails, we put little nails round, round the faces and that. And there's about, I don't know, six or seven different types of nails. And somebody might just say, are you sure these are bronze renaissance studs? <laughs> well, it's too late then, they've done it. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I did know. Yeah. I was sure, but now I'm not. Yeah. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. That's what the enemy does to us. Yeah. That's right. I am sure, but now I'm not. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Our, 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 assurance, our assurance and our confidence is in God in obedience to him. And, and we know that our God will show up. Amen. All yeah. being well, we will be going to India this year, uh, Wayne and myself. Amen. And, um, and somebody said to me the other day, well, are you sure that you'll be going? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm nearly sure. I was. But my prayer is, Lord, if it isn't meant to be, then it won't be. Yeah. And then it won't be because I need to just give everything over to God. So I need to be obedient to God. If, if God says no, would I be disappointed? Of course I would. Without a doubt. And I don't know. Because we never really know. 
Because Jesus tells a story, doesn't he? It says that, that, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of living a little bit here, but the story comes about the rich man, and, uh, and he gets richer, so he builds bigger barns and bigger barns for greater crops, and he stores all his goods in the barns, and then, uh, then the Lord says, you fool, this very day you may, your life may be taken from you. Yeah. So we actually don't really know. Hallelujah. We don't really know. We've only got today. Amen. We've only got today. So as long as we've got today, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. And you can't rejoice and be glad in it if you don't have joy or a sense of humor. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> so Lord, uh, bring us that into our hearts, that lightness of spirit. Amen. 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 Where are we going, Lord? So that's the second day. We'll, we'll slide back to the bottom. <laughs> now then. Verse 20. It says, when the trumpet sounded, hey, that okay, I found it. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. Yeah. And at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the walls did collapse. Everyone charged straight in and they took the city. And in verse 21 it said, they devoted the city to the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And destroyed with every with the sword every living thing in it. Men and women, young and old, cattle, sheep and donkeys. They had to destroy everything in the city. They took the city for the Lord. Now we won't understand that in our culture. We won't understand that. But God was doing something. And what does that mean? There'll be things in our lives that we do not understand. But rest assured, God will be doing something. Yeah. Our ways are not his ways. That's right. Our thoughts are not his That's thoughts. Right. And we've got to understand that not everything that God, uh, that seems to happen, will agree with. But when God's doing it, yeah, yeah. We've, got to, yeah. we've got to stay faithful. Yeah. I was thinking this morning, do you think the Israelites, when they, when they started to cry out to God and they were enslaved in Egypt, and they said, Lord, help us, save us. Do you think that have uh, been saved as they wanted to be saved. That's right. Do you think they'd have been saved the way they were thinking? Right. There were the plagues that had to go. Mm. There was uh, the, the t having, to, having to sacrifice a lamb and put it on the doorpost and the angel of death passing over over the Passover. That, that birth the Passover, there was all that that was going on. Do you remember? There was coming to the Red Sea. The long way around to the Red Sea, yeah. so that they could get caught up with the Egyptian army. Right. Do you think that they expected that? None of that. Mm. Can you see God's ways in our ways? Yeah. But right. the bigger picture is that God is in control, and I think that this that's a t that's a testing bed of faith. Yes. That's where our faith is tested, yes. in the chaos and the nonsense of it all. That we still know God's still with us, and I don't get it, but I'm going with it. I, I don't yeah. understand when I'm going to go with it. Hallelujah. You know, I, I said to you the little story with Isaiah, and I got everybody to pray, and then Donna called me in the afternoon and said, uh, Isaiah's been rushing to hospital, we better pray harder, you know, and I'm thinking, ah, <laughs> what are we going to do? It's not good, he had a heart problem. He was really, really poorly, uh, very, very sick. So obviously we got everybody to pray, and I came in here shouting at God, God, what's the point? What's the point of praying? What's the point of having everybody pray? What, do, what is it, God? Do you never get like that? Yeah. Do you never like, I have no air to tear out. But I, I think if I had, I'd probably have none. But do you know what I mean? If you really get to that point, it's not just me, is it? Please say it's not just me. No. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's being real. God wants us to be real. I came in here and, and, and I was so so frustrated and God said to me he said Peter did I not just tell you on Sunday that I hear your prayers yes I said yeah you did well leave it with me and I just took a breath and said okay God and then from that moment I had a peace and I just knew everything would be fine I didn't know what journey would what path we'd have to walk on for it to be fine but ultimately I knew it would be fine I guess it's a similar situation with your Adam you know, you don't, it's a crazy journey. You think, oh, what's going on? But what if all this has been instigated by God, one step after another to get him completely set free, to get him completely saved, Greg? Yeah. What if? It's not our way and we don't get it. Yeah. But God, 
Yes. And we could choose Adam and we could choose Isaiah. Yes. And we could choose, you know, Barry's wife. Uh, she's not so well as she's in hospital. Please remember Barry's wife, Donna. 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 Remember her in your prayers, please. Uh, I, I, and same again. What, what's going on, God? Yeah. Just one thing after another after another. And we've got to learn to believe. We've got to just walk in faith and yes. stay Amen. obedient. Amen? Yes. We really have to do that. And so I said, Joshua said to the two men who expired out that, no, we're going into that. We'll not go there, believe it. We'll leave it at that. I want to pray. Father, I just want to pray that you would, Father God, underline anything that, that has been spoken, especially from your word, oh God. From the testimonies, oh God. From the, the worship to today, Lord. That we would leave this place pleased that we came and blessed to be in your presence. And Father God, uh, uh, prepared for the next step of our journey. Prepared, oh God. Uh, encouraged, oh God, and strengthened. Underline that you're with us, Father. Would you, would you just do that? Would you pour that into us today? In the powerful name of Jesus. Thank you for everyone in here. Thank you, Lord, for your love for us. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Lord God, I'm so pleased and so blessed that you are a, a compassionate, merciful God. Who, Father God, who is slow to anger and who is rich in love. Father, I, I need I need a God who is slow to anger because, because I, I know that I'd probably make you angry sometimes if you weren't slow to anger. <laughs> so thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for all that is good. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Wow.